Well, hello to our CT at Home family. It's so good uh, to be with you today, and we're excited that we have two new CT at Home uh, groups that have begun. We're believing big things that are going to happen in 2021 through this effort that we're calling CT at Home. I know that you're used to Chase Tremere, one of our leaders and pastors standing here right now. I'm welcoming you because Chase has got a strong word from the Word of God for us today as we continue our series called Starting Week. I know you're going to be blessed and encouraged by God speaking to you through Chase. What image do you think of when you think of the two words mental health? You know, for me, I think about a neutral colored office with a big brown couch and a chair across from that couch and a man or woman asking questions about feelings and life and trauma. And you may have a similar kind of image in your mind, but I bet that none of us would think about what's behind me and that's a gym. But the truth is, at least for me, is I've treated my mental health like I treat the gym. If I'm dealing with a weakness or a struggle, then for me, I think about all the things that I need to do to go fix it just like I do in the gym. I need to work out more, I need to work harder, I need to add another exercise, I need to do more weight, I need to keep adding, 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 and that surely is gonna fix it. And what I realized, much like finishing a workout, I'm physically exhausted, the same happens in my mental health. You see, when I try to act as the only source of fixing my life, my mental health, covering up a weakness or trying to make it stronger, I oftentimes end up finding myself in a place where I'm kind of paralyzed. I don't want to do anything. I recognize that my problem is not going away and I'm left with the question, well, what now? If you're just joining us, we're in the middle of this series called Start Week. And we're talking about the truth of what Paul tells us in the Bible that we shouldn't cover up our weaknesses. We shouldn't avoid them. But in fact, that God could take the weaknesses in our life and use them for strength. More specifically, we're talking about what that looks like when it comes to our mental health. You see, the truth is all of us, just like we have physical bodies, we have minds, we have hearts, we have emotions, and we all have mental health. And we all struggle with different areas. Last week, we talked about anxiety. If you didn't see that message, I want to encourage you to go back and watch it. And today I want to kind of hit on depression. What happens to us when we struggle with depression? And more importantly, not just how we try to fix that or solve it, but is there an invitation to a better way to live even in the midst of our toughest seasons? You see, I think Jesus has something important to say about this. It's not just something we can do to fix it, but it truly is a way that we can transform our lives. In the book of John chapter 15, Jesus starts out by saying this. He says, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it so that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Listen to this. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. Once again, he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. You see, this is such an important picture because for you and I, we may not really understand this idea of being a vine, but for the group of people who originally heard Jesus speak this, they were familiar with what it meant to farm, to plant a seed, to reap, and to sow. More importantly, this group of religious people who were hearing this message from Jesus, their whole life had grown up learning that they were the vine. Throughout the ancient writings of the Old Testament, we see the nation of Israel, not geographically, but the group of, of Hebrews, they were considered the vine. But what you'll see throughout every reference, reference in the Old Testament about being the vine is that that vine ends up not producing any fruit. So what Jesus tells them and what he tells us is he says, hold on, we got to learn a new way. I'm the vine. You're the branches. I am the source of what's producing this fruit. You stay connected to me. 
we get to verse four and we hear that word abide, abide in me and I in you. So what does it mean to abide? Well, for us to abide in Jesus and for him to abide in us means that we stay connected to him and we make him the source of everything in our life. When it comes to our joy, to our peace, he is the source of that, not our circumstances, not how much money is in the bank, not how well the job is going. The hard question is that sounds really great, but when I'm dealing with a weakness, when I'm in a tough season, even specifically when we talk about depression, how can I stay connected to the source when I don't feel like I can connect to anybody? You see, why I love this verse so much is because Jesus is showing us that it's not all about us. And what I mean by that is this, you are not the person who has to be the source of everything in your life. Because the truth is this, we see it in Proverbs and we see Jesus quote it in the gospel, the rain falls on the righteous and the wicked. Hard times are going to come for all of us. Difficult seasons of our life are going to happen. And it's not based on you. You see, oftentimes when I think about even moments in my life where I've walked through some depression seasons, I, I think about the things that I did to get there. I think about how I maybe didn't believe God enough. I didn't pray enough. I didn't go to a church enough. I wasn't doing enough of the right things. And now I've found myself in this pit. But the truth is this, God's love for me is not based on what I do. The weaknesses that I experience in my life are not based on whether God is punishing me or not. You see, we talk about depression and words like anxiety and panic. We talk about mental health and you may have grown up in a place like me where we just didn't talk about it. It wasn't something that was part of our life. It was just a faith issue of, well, believe better, believe harder, pray more, and you should be fine. And if you're not, there's something else going on with you. But the truth, once again, hard seasons come for us all. The invitation Jesus says for us and for you today is, can you stay connected to him? Can you abide in him and allow him to abide in you? It's a relationship where he speaks to us, we speak to him. And no matter what the storm is, no matter if it's sunny or it's a hurricane, we are connected to the vine. You see, we can't control the weather. We can't control everything that happens in our life. The truth, honestly, is this. You may have made a decision that's led you into a season that you don't want to be. Or you may have had something happen to you that has put you in this season that you really want to get out of. But instead of thinking that you're by yourself, that you deserve this bad thing that's happened to you, I want to invite you to think differently today of what would it look like for me to stay connected to Jesus and see how he could use this situation for my good? You see, I think we all know what it means to remain to stay, because honestly, we had to do a lot of that last year. We got these remain at home orders, stay at your house. And if you were like me and you've got little kids, you had to figure out what that meant. Some days it meant, well, we're going to play. Some days it meant you need to go upstairs and get out of my face. A lot of you haven't even gone back to the office yet. And you've had to figure out what it looks like to remain in your own home. The truth when it comes to remaining in Jesus is just like that. It, it changes. Some days for me, it means that I got to put on some worship music and I've got to listen to truth being sung about who I am and who he is. Some days it means that I've got to spend a little extra time praying and saying, Jesus, I can't do this on my own. I need you. Some days it looks like sitting down with a therapist and saying, here's where I'm struggling today. Can you help? You see, on the flip side of this is a lot of times people say, well, don't take these meds and don't visit this therapist and oh, don't read that book. This is a faith thing. You can do this, push through. But the truth is God puts people in our life to help us. 
But what I want you to hear today is this. It's not just going to be that great book or that awesome therapist or this great med. Because that may work for a season, but I'm telling you, beyond just your weakness, God has a life full of fruit, full of everything that you want if you'll stay connected to Him. That life of peace and joy, that life of feeling taken care of and secure, the life where you are excited to be generous with what God has blessed you with, all of this comes when we can say, Jesus, I'm going to stay connected to you. And for those of you right now, you're watching. You are in the darkest moment that you think you've ever been in. You hear the word depression and you think, I've been dealing with this forever. I want to tell you, you are not alone. God hears every prayer. He is with you. And I know the storm is raging. I know it's dark. I know you don't feel like you can see the next day coming. The sun hasn't shone in for who knows how long. And I want to tell you, stay connected. Stay connected. It may look like a prayer in this next moment. It may look like putting on another worship song. It may look like reaching out to someone. Maybe through our healing place. Maybe a local therapist that's near you. Listen to me, he has not left you. He's still with you. He's not above the storm watching what's happening. He's walking with you through it. If you will invite him to abide in you. So I want to pray for you. And then we're going to take a moment. There's an old song that I remember growing up singing that recently came back out again. It was kind of updated and I love this song because the opening line is, I think, the, the prayer for us today. The thing that I want to challenge you to just try, to simply pray, Jesus, come live in me all my life. Jesus, come live in me all my life. And watch what could happen as though the storm may not disperse. You may not wake up and your problems be gone but you now have a Savior who is walking with you through this season you find yourself in. And I can tell you this, you will get out on the other side and you will have a story to tell that can give hope to someone else who's going to walk through the same season that you find yourself in today. So let me pray. God, I'm so grateful for a place where we can be honest, where we can be open, where we can share our greatest weaknesses, the burdens that we carry. Lord, I'm thankful for our CT at home communities that are watching this. God, you've already put the best people in our life that we can lean on and say, I'm struggling. So Lord, I pray today for all of us, no matter where we might find ourselves, maybe the sun's shining, maybe everything is great. Now is definitely the time to say this prayer, but God, for those of us who are walking through a dark season, even in this very moment, God, would you speak encouragement to our hearts? God, would you remind us that you're still with us? And Lord, would you help us to pray that courageous prayer, Jesus, come live in me. And as we pray that, Lord, you'll begin to show us things. You'll begin to put some people in our life. You'll begin to open some doors. Help us to walk through them, Lord. And help us to remember always you are with us no matter how dark the night might get, no matter how alone we may feel, you are hearing our prayers. You are still with us. Jesus, come live in me. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
precious thoughts There's no hiding
Well, I love that Chase gave us a really simple way to live out the message that he taught us today. Just a few words to ask God to come and live inside of us. I don't know about you, but typically when my feet hit the floor, there are a million things already asking for my attention between kids and work and errands and just all of the things that life demands from me. If I don't take a moment before my feet hit the floor to ask God to come and be the center of my life, to ask him to come and not only live inside of me, but then to, to live through me, it changes the trajectory of my day. So we do, we wanna challenge you with this one simple step this week. Every morning, pray that prayer, God, come live inside of me. I also wanna say thank you to those of you in our CT at Home communities who are investing in the ministry of Cross Timbers. I hope that you've been able to join us from, for some of our Facebook Live events with our Healing Place. We've seen over 2,500 people who have been able to experience the hope of Jesus through our Healing Place team, learning what it looks like to turn our weaknesses into strengths and use them for God's glory. So thank you for investing in the ministry of Cross Timbers. It's because of you that we're able to continue to give hope in the name of Jesus. So we'll see you next week. It's gonna be a powerful message as we wrap up this series, Start Week.